How I wish, how I wish you were here. And discipline remains mercifully. Yes, and then neither would you, Derek, this star nonsense. Yeah, yeah. No, it is a... I'm not sure of it. <laughs> Good morning and thank you for stopping by to hang out with me for a little while here on the couch. Boy, do we have a good one for you today. Our tutorial today is the title track to Pink Floyd's ninth studio album, Wish You Were Here. In 1975, the members of Pink Floyd found themselves disillusioned and unsatisfied with fame and fortune. The album was a conceptual critique of the music industry and of the greed and lack of compassion that surrounded them in their personal lives. The song Wish You Were Here expresses the sense of loss felt by the band and especially by Roger Waters following their original leader Sid Barrett's departure due to mental illness. Let's jump right in and learn that beautiful acoustic intro riff. A couple of quick items before we get started. Um, number one, if you would be so kind as to give me a thumbs up down below, I would sincerely appreciate your help in that regard. Item number two is that on the recording, this part of the song is played on a 12-string guitar. I don't have a 12-string guitar, and most people don't have a 12-string guitar. Fortunately, this is a song that sounds just as good when played on a six-string, so that's how we're going to learn it this morning. The very first part um, is made by forming a G chord with your fingers, but um, as you probably know, there are several different ways to play the G chord and the way we're going to play it for the purposes of this song is we're going to keep our ring finger planted on the third fret of both the E and the B string. So the, the song is in standard tuning, but those two we're going to keep our finger there the entire time. And for the rest of the G chord to form it, we're going to put our middle finger on the third fret of the sixth string, and our index finger is going to be on the second fret of the fifth string or the A string. So there's our G chord. It starts off like this. The way that goes is we're going to play that third fret of the sixth string. Then we're going to play the A string open and we're going to hammer on to the 2nd fret. And then we're going to play the D string open. And then we're going to go to the 2nd fret of the D string. Now we're going to play... So just a few strums there on, the, on strings 4 through 1. And coming out of that we've got this. So that's the second fret on the D, which we've already got covered. We're playing the G string open, back to the second fret on the D, and then the D string open, and then we go back to our G chord. So 
So we play that entire progression two times. It goes through a progression four times, but after the second time, it changes slightly. So now our, our hand is gonna be still in the same position. We're gonna keep that ring finger planted on the B and the E strings. The beginning is gonna be the same. Here's where it changes up a little bit. So instead of going to the G string, we're gonna go down to the A string. So that's the D on the second, D open, uh, A string on the second, and A string open. Now we're gonna play um, a little bit of an oddball chord. We, we're keeping our ring finger planted there. It does not move. But we're gonna take our index finger and we're gonna flatten it out over um, the G and the D strings, so strings uh, three and four. So now we're covered strings one all the way through four. Uh, ring finger is on the third fret of the E and the B. Index finger is on the second fret of the G and the D. And that's gonna be our strum. We're gonna go back to this. Now that exact same pattern. We go to a G chord. It goes through that little strum pattern right on the G chord four times. And then um, this the 12 string guitar starts playing the same thing again. And then we have a six string that goes into the uh, first solo, and that's what we're gonna learn now. Our first and main solo is really easy and fun to play. It starts out like this. Well, that is a um, slide from two to four on the G. Landing on the third fret of the B. And then we're gonna go. So that's five on the B, four on the G, three on the B. Then we're gonna pull off from four to two to open on the G. And then we're gonna play the open D. Then a slide up from one to two on the A. So again, that whole section nice and slow. Next piece is this. That is a slide from the third fret to the fifth fret on the B and the B string, so I'm barring them both with my index. Slide up to five, go back to three and play it again. Then I make this D sus type shape, so my um, middle finger is on the D note here on the third fret of the B string. Index finger is on the second fret of the G string, and we're going to slide from there. We're going to go up to four and five. And then we come back to the home base. We play it again, but when we play it, we pull off the index finger. So it's actually kind of a pull off there. We're going to do it again. There's a little bit of a pause. We do it again, and then we have this shape. That is middle finger on the 5th fret of the D and index finger on the 4th fret of the G. Um, then our second section starts. It goes like this. So that starts kind of the same. Slide from 2 to 4 to the 3 on the B and then back to the four on the G and then five on the B. I'm gonna bend up that fifth fret on the B, write it back down and then pull off to the third fret and then we go back to the fourth fret of the G, second fret of the G. Now we're gonna bend up the fourth fret of the G string. We're gonna play uh, three and then five on the B back to the G. So four and then two on the G. Now 
We're going to do that real similar. Slide again from 2 to 4 on G. Back and forth between the 3rd and the 5th fret and the 4th the fret on the G, 3rd and 5th on the B. But this time we're going to bend it up. Play it again when it comes down. Play the 3rd fret on the B. 4th fret on the G. 2nd fret on the G. Just bend up the 4th fret and play the 2nd fret. So again that part. a couple times there and then we go into the verse section. After we come out of the um, solo then we go into the main verse of the song and there are, um, it goes around the verse four times and here are the chords that we're going to need. Our home bass is going to be a G chord, kind of like we've already played with our ring finger holding down the B and the E strings there at the third fret. We're also going to need a C chord, just an open C is fine. We're also going to need a D chord, We're going to need an A minor. I, I think that it sounds more like the song if you play the A minor with your pinky on the third fret of the high E string as well. And uh, back to the G. So as it goes through this progression, it changes every other time. The first time we're going to start with a G, every time we're going to start with a G, uh, but the first time it goes C to a D to an A minor, back to our home base, the G. Second time through, the C and the D change places, so the D is first, then the C. Third time it's back to just like the first time, and the fourth time it's to the, the, the traded places again. So I'll kind of show you how that goes. Uh, starts out with our G, we're going to play it a couple times. It's kind of a down, then an up, down strum pattern. Then it goes to the C. And then to the D. The A minor there, and then back to the G. The next time through, it's going to go to the D first. The C. To the A minor. Back to the G. Third time through, just like the first time. So after that G, we got the C. To the D. Last time through, we're going to start off again with the D, so the D to the C. We go back into our main riff, and we also are going to start uh, solo number two, and that's what we'll learn next. Before we start this second solo, I wanted to take note of a couple of important points. Number one, on the recording, this solo is played on the pedal steel guitar. It is also very low in the mix. There are some parts that are memorable and that stand out, but it is very difficult to hear every note. David Gilmore is also singing or humming the notes that he's playing on the pedal steel as he plays them. If you're playing alone, the solo absolutely can be played on acoustic guitar. There are, however, a lot of bends to mimic the bar sliding over the strings on the steel guitar, so it's a little more painful on your fingers if you choose to do that. If you prefer to skip this solo and you're playing the song entirely on acoustic, you could just play the main riff that we learned in the beginning of the lesson because that's the guitar part that stands out loudest in the mix while this solo is being played. Let's go ahead and get started now. 
Second solo to my way of thinking has a couple different sections. The first section starts like this. Second section goes like this. And it ends like that. So it starts out, um, the first section starts out on the 10th fret of the B string. We're going to bend it up and play it three times. Second time we're going to bend it up as we come down we're going to play the 8th fret and then we're going to slide away. Then we go to the 10th fret on the E we're going to bend it up and uh, when it comes back down we'll play it unbent. Back to the B string um, we're going to bend it up and just play it once and let it come down. And then we're going to do it again just like the very first time we're going to play it three times. Now we're going to um, bend it up. When it comes down, we pull off to 8. Then we're going to slide to 7. Then we're going to play 7 on the G string, 7 on the D string twice. Uh, start in the second section. We're going to slide up to the 9th of the G with our uh, middle finger. Play the 8th of the B and then... 10 on the B, we're going to bend it up and catch the 10th of the E with our pinky. Um, bend it up again. Play the 10 on the E two times. Play it as it's bent, let it come down and then play the 8th on the B. Then we're going to go up here to the 12th on the B. I'm going to catch the 12th of the E with our pinky. Um, then we're going to do this. So bend up, pull off to 10, bend up again, and play it three times when it's bent up. Back down here to 10 on the B. Catch the uh, 10th on the E with your pinky. Come down. Play it and let it slide down because it was still bent. Then we have this quick little lick. So that's eight, not eight to ten on the B. We're gonna bend up ten as it comes down. Pull off to eight. Go to nine on the G, and then back to eight on the B. Back to twelve. Bend up, catch the pinky. Play it as it comes down. Play the tenth on the B as it comes down, and then play the. Um, I'm sorry, the 12th on the B as it comes down, and then play the 10th, and then we end with this. So that's kind of a unison bend. We keep the um, 10th fret pushed down with our pinky on the E string, and at the same time we're bending up the 10th fret of the B. Immediately after we come out of that second solo, it goes into the chorus, which um, is the same chord progression as the verse was, but it only does half of it. So the first time around it goes C to the D, the second time around it goes D to the C. It goes like this. After it goes all the way through that um, both times, then it starts the uh, the main song riff again. While that's playing, there's an outro solo, which we'll quickly cover next. Okay, let's make a run at this outro solo real quick. Um, again, it's a little bit difficult because it's played on a pedal steel, because he's singing the notes as he plays it, because there's other guitar parts playing. Um, a couple different other guitars playing different parts so it's a little bit hard to hear all the notes 
um, but we're going to see if we can get a pretty close facsimile here. It starts like this. So that's 9 on the D and the G and 7 on the G. Just bouncing back and forth between those notes. Uh, next is this. Bend up twice at 10 on the B. 8 on the B. 7 on the G. Slide up to 9 on the G. Two notes at 8 on the B. Back to 9 on the G. Then this. We slid up to 9 on the D to 7 on the G, 9 on the D, sorry, 7 on the G, back to 9, and then 7 on the, on the G. Next lick is this. So that's 8 on the B, 9 on the G, 8 on the B. Bend up 10 on the B, catch 10 on the E, bend up 10 on the E, play it unbent, and then bend up 10 on the B again. That's kind of how that little lick ends. Um, next we have... So that's 8 on the B, 9 on the G, 8 on the B, we're gonna bend up 10 on the B, play, um, yeah, 10 on the E, we're gonna play it twice, 10 on the B, 10 on the E twice, we go through that three times, and then we're gonna play the, the bent 10 and it comes back down. Ending on eight on the B. Then we go up to 12 and we do kind of the same thing. Bend up 12, catch 12 on the E with our pinky, play it and come back down and then go to 10. Then we go back down here, 10 on the um, B, we're gonna bend it up, catch 10 on the E. Back to 12, back to 10. Now we're gonna do kind of a lick, a little bit like um, when we first started, but we're gonna do it here on the ninth of the G and the tenth and the, I'm sorry, the eighth and the tenth of the B. And then eight on the B, seven on, or nine on the G. Last note that kind of fades out is seven on the G. Wish You Were Here is a great song that causes me to ponder my life's path. It talks about lost souls swimming in a fishbowl year after year, running over the same old ground. What have we found? The same old fears. Wish You Were Here. I think it also causes us to think about loved ones who are no longer with us, those who we wish were here. It causes me to reflect on how I treat people that I love. Sometimes we don't fully appreciate what we have until it's gone, and that's kind of a sad thought. It also may cause you to reflect on your own end, not only where are my loved ones now, but what will become of me when I pass over into eternity. People have many different thoughts and ideas on the subject, but to my way of thinking, it's far too important a question to leave up to chance. I can tell you that God's Word says there is one way to be with Him in eternity, and that's through Jesus Christ who gave everything for you so that you could be with Him in the end. The other option is eternal separation from Him, and the thing is that He won't force anyone. If you wanted nothing to do with Him here and now, why would you want to be with Him then? If you don't know Him, and I don't mean know about Him, I mean if you don't know Him, I'd encourage you to seek Him with all of your heart. His word says that he's never far from any one of us, and if you call on his name, you will be saved. That's all for today's lesson. If you found benefit or entertainment here, please like and subscribe. I also have affiliate links in the description. If you could use a set of strings or are interested in purchasing any of the gear that I use in these videos, 
I will receive a small commission at no cost to you, provided that you click through and make a purchase from one of those links. I am sincerely grateful for your support in that way. Thank you again for spending some time with me today, and I do hope to see you back here again soon, right here on the couch. I don't care how flat you make a pancake, it's got two sides. Yes.